Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio. And today I'd like to talk about sound samples because I'm receiving two types of comments, two types of observations. One of them is that I need sound samples to tell how good something is, like a, a pair of speakers or a change of cables, compare A to B. And, uh, and these commenters say that, yes, I can tell based on the differences whether it's good or bad. And uh, the second type of comments that I get is that these sort of sound samples and comparisons are utterly and completely useless. And, uh, and actually, now, if you ask my opinion about them, my opinion about sound samples really is that they are purely for entertainment. And, uh, and the way I'm listening to them and why I'm doing them is for fun and uh, nothing more really because uh, when you hear something most of what you hear for any sound sample out there 99.0 percent of what you hear is the room acoustics and the miking so the way it's being recorded and and what the room does to the sound and, and when you are de making a calls and determinations, it's basically, most of it is around the, the way it was recorded uh, and also the way it, it's getting transformed into digital, whether that mechanism, whether that recording and the changing process, including YouTube's conversion algorithm, is that compatible with your system or not? Because if your digital is not compatible with the digital that created the signal, then it will give you a type of sound that's falling apart, that doesn't make sense when you reproduce it in your audio system. And I'm telling this because in the past couple of years, I've done a lot of experimentation of, uh, of hearing recorded music, recording it myself on, on different things, different situations and uh, with, with like cell phones and uh, the Tascam recorder and that, that tube mic uh, and, and, and different things, different rooms, different systems and playing it back on, on different uh, gear as well, like on a computer with different headphones different decks uh, and um, different systems and and what I can tell is that whether something sounds good or bad mostly mostly depends on whether your deck and, and your playback system that you're listening to was it matching well the source or not if it matches it well you get the thumbs up if there's a mismatch then you get the thumbs down and that's the number one thing. The exact same sound sample can be both flipping up and down. And that's one thing, compatibility issues. And uh, those of you who, are, who have spent a lot of time in audio, decades, you all know about this already, probably. Uh, and those of you who just got into audio, maybe spent about a year, maybe two or three or five in uh, developing your digital system and you don't really have any experience with any uh, analog, except sometimes maybe you hear something and eh, kind of iffy or maybe you liked it, maybe you didn't. But uh, nowadays with most modern digital gear, you, you get like a tunnel of vision that, that you develop and if you don't develop your experience basis, especially, especially because there's uh, the opportunities to listen to other people's system, the opportunities to listen to a, a wide array of comparisons of different combinations in, in, uh, with audio dealers is, is not happening anymore because they are closing down. And, and, and that's the number one importance of having an audio dealer in your area is that you go there regularly and listen to all the combinations. So when my mentor Stu was alive, 
I was in his store every single day for more than a decade. <laughs> Can you guys imagine that? Spending hours in, 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 a, in an audio store with several systems set up running for a decade, every day, several hours. That's the way you can build up an experience basis. And, and yes, that, that's when, when you hear such a vast and uh, array of combinations between different gear, that's when you realize that, uh, and also hearing them in different rooms, different room acoustics. And uh, that's when you realize that even just A-B testing something it's completely meaningless because uh, A-B testing it in one system, like a pair of speakers, will give you very different results compared to A-B testing it in a different system or A-B testing it in a different room or A-B testing with different music, a different deck or not at a deck or maybe like you put a, a turntable on. It's just like uh, flipping it around completely. Or if you just A-B test it in the same system, same room, and you get an impression and then you live with both of these systems for a several months each, that will give you, a, might give you a completely different opinion than just an A-B test. So I am saying this because I want you all to, to just consider, to consider the idea that uh, do not make any rush decisions partly because uh, unless you have that thing in your room in your system and you experienced it for for about a period of a month during which time you experience how it reacts to the line ac conditions in your in your area in your house how it reacts with the diverse material you throw it on it how it impacts your life because that's the most important thing for me in audio is what sort of changes does it do to your life does it make you a neurotic crazy person who is like like a bad heroin addict looking for a bigger and bigger thrills but not getting satisfaction ever so it's just uh, it's a, it's a train wreck for you or does it really uh, make makes your life complete and does it allow you to enjoy music to listen to music instead of uh, just uh, making you a, a crazy monkey wheel person and and some uh, some of you might say that oh Janos so you are saying that we should go for a syrupy euphonic warm sound and forget about high resolution high quality what are you advocating what are your thoughts and my thoughts on this are that uh, a system that sounds balanced is not syrupy it's not hodgepodge it's not mishmash it's not hiding the details the very exact opposite so a system that is balanced that makes your life complete is the one that gives you natural sound that does the least processing to the material you are hearing and you can hear it in its natural form under that i mean uh, it goes that your playback gear does the least amount of additional processing to the music that was already added to it during the recording, mastering and tweaking process when they made the music. And what is the least amount of addition? Because I'm listening to live speakers and, and live speakers, uh, we know that they are not, not the most inert things. So they add something to the music. But when you look at inert cabinets, they also add something to the music. And... Uh, and and i have like long videos about that that basically mm, explain that that it doesn't matter whether it's a live cabinet or inert cabinet both of them change the sound 
but the changes that an inert cabinet adds to the sound are much more detrimental to the naturalness of the music than what a live cabinet does. And now I hear like already I can see like tons of comments being typed that no, I heard live speakers and they, they totally destroyed the music and I agree with you because there's a lot of stuff that you can buy commercially which are just huge thumbs down. Uh, making a proper live cabinet is not so easy and it, it, it can, for, if you do it for yourself, it can get pretty normal, pretty easy, and you can do it on a, a, a nice budget. But if you want to market it and sell it, then the prices will be so steep that if you want like a decent cabinet, the prices are astronomical. And if you want something that's, that's an, a live cabinet at a very cheap, affordable price, of course it will be colored like hell. It, 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 it won't be what you are expecting if you want uh, uh, a balanced and even sound. And uh, anyway, so I think now I'm, I'm really getting off topic and trying to look at different diverse things, but that's because uh, uh, there's just so many aspects of how we can judge the character of the system. And this is where I departed from my main topic of the day. Is uh, How can we judge the character of a loudspeaker based on a sound sample? And you cannot. And, and I'm going back to it because Frank shared with us a really wonderful uh, uh, experience and advice on, on, on the sound that you are hearing. And, and he is talking about uh, high fidelity, the highest fidelity gear that you can buy at the most expensive price range that gives you uh, a super pinpoint imaging and, uh, and, and he is talking about that. So high end glorifies that precise pinpoint imaging reserved to the few who are able to purchase the highest fidelity performance priced gear. However, in reality, it mostly it's lacking the physical illusion and presence of the body of the sound. So, so what this pinpoint imaging does is, is that it transforms what's in your media and creates changes uh, the many of the subtle acoustic cues and, and transforms them into visual cues. So what happens is that there's a physical body to the sound which gets lost in this conversion process and it's going to get changed into a visual cue. And, um, and, and let's see what, um, what Frank tells about that. And he says that the voice produced by a human body, that's what gets lost. The space within music manifests its presence. And when you have the pinpoint imaging, that space within music is gone. It's being taken out and transformed into a very sharp visual cue. I'm not saying it's bad or good, but I'm saying that it's a trick, it's an audible illusion that altering the natural sound, how, how my voice sounds, how the singer's voice sounds, how the instrument's voice sounds, into a, a compact visual cue. The plasma of the sound becomes like an entity with a dimension, be it a musical instrument, a natural environment, or a human voice. Even this has a presence. So, if you if you have a system that doesn't do these pinpoint imaging conversions but allows natural imaging then then you feel a physical presence you don't see it but like you don't have that pinpoint visual cue but you have the feeling that if you close your eyes then it feels like the person is there singing, like the violin is there, and, and you can 
feel the human presence behind the sound. And, and what Frank says about this, who never had the experience can not imagine what it is. Sticking to measurements and performance of audio gear and thinking on a cerebral level of wishful reality. So, so that's why if we are looking at gear, audio gear, that reproduces sound naturally, that doesn't take it into this uh, altered reality pinpoint imaging direction. When you listen to sound samples made with these systems, they don't make any sense whatsoever on systems that alter the sound to become pinpoint image. There you lose whatever benefit that sound has. So that's why I think it's like so darn useless for me to make sound samples with La Grande or Voice of Lancelot because uh, almost every single one of you has uh, systems that create this pinpoint image and, and those are utterly incapable of recreating that experience that this type of uh, sound gives. And that's why I'm having fun sometimes recording stuff and, and basically I'm doing that for experimentation to see, uh, to compare, to hear how what I hear sounds compared to what I recorded. And most of the time what I record doesn't even remotely, remotely sound similar to what I hear in the room. And, uh, and even if I like play back on, on the same system, like uh, I play back what I recorded on the voice of Lancelot, on the voice of Lancelot, it just so much is lost, that so much is lost, I just cannot even just uh, begin to uh, talk about it, like 99% is lost. And, and if I listen to uh, voice of Lancelot recording on not the voice of Lancelot, but on my computer with my Sennheiser headphones, that even more is lost. It's just like there's almost nothing left of the experience. Nothing. Zero. Zero. So, so that's why I really understand those of you who want to hear sound samples. But uh, when I, this is my experience, then I'm making just random sound samples with my phone. If I do it with my phone, it's complete rubbish and has zero relevance to how it sounds, even if I play it back on the original system zero. If I play around with, with the test cam recorder, it, it doesn't give the same tonality. The bass response is totally off, off scatter. It just cannot do bass. It, it will make it choppy, wavy, all kind of uh, mishmash happening there. But uh, I have to play around with my set. Where is it? How I'm holding? If I put it on a stand, it's, it's rubbish, always rubbish. You have to use it by yourself. By the way, this is a nice miking technique. The very best microphone stand is the human body. There was one of the uh, legendary recording engineers and uh, his best recordings were recorded with, with when the stand was his wife.